everybody. Welcome back to Ursa's Life. I'm so excited to be here today to share an update with you from the daily devotional slash workbook that I shared with you guys in the last video. And I've learned a lot in the last three days and I just wanted to share it with you guys. I will probably make this like a weekly thing maybe like to share some of the key lessons that i've learned and some information from the lessons but the first three days were just really key to me i think to kind of get me in the mindset to be ready to dig deeper and um really begin to uncover those those issues and and get and dig down and get to the root of a lot of issues and so that's why I wanted to share this because I just felt like these first three days were really preparation for what's to come because it's a seven week um, workbook and it's not going to be a, a fast process if you want to hear more about it stay tuned let's get started now for anyone who wants to join me I have included a link in the description box on this video and also pinned it in the comments it's also in the previous video that I shared just to kind of introduce the um, book that I've added now as I stated in the last video this is kind of like the third leg on my stool so to speak um, of this weight loss health fitness journey because I have found the perfect uh, diet or food plan. I don't want to say a diet because it's not really a diet. It's a life change, but it's a food plan, which is low carb intermittent fasting. And right now I'm doing one meal a day with the uh, eat like a bear program. But intermittent fasting can cover a wide range of things from one meal a day, two meals a day, a certain hour window, whatever best fits your lifestyle. But I have found that intermittent fasting really does work for me as far as weight loss, but also how I feel when I intermittent fast. I also have less pain in my joints. It ultimately goes away, especially when I keep my food low carb. Um, it just works for me because because I don't like to have to think about food. I don't wanna to have to plan multiple meals a day. I don't like thinking of snacks and this, that, and the other, and constantly fixing different meals. With OMAD, or even two meals a day, that's off the table. I just know what I'm gonna have once a day, and then I don't have to think about food anymore. That works for me. That's not for everybody, but for me, I like not having to think about it because the food stressed me out <laughs> on diets and plans that where I had to weigh food and all that kind of stuff, it didn't ever work for me because it was just too much. Now, um, and I've also found a great exercise plan, which is walking one mile a day every day, six days a week. Now, I can walk more than one mile and most days I do. If you guys follow me on uh, Instagram or Facebook or even here on the community page, I post every day that I walk. And that has really gotten me moving and active and just to be consciously purposeful about movement every day. And those two things are working well for me. And I just, but I just needed that third component, which is this component because this gets to the root of why, how I got here in the first place, okay? The exercise and the, and the walking will help me to correct this problem, okay? But if I don't deal with the root cause of it, I will continue to drive myself back to the destination I don't wanna go. And I saw that over the last year. Um, as I said, you know, I had some unexpected tragedies happen in my life and, um, stressors that just caused me to revert back to old habits and practices and I was driving myself as fast as I could back to where I was and thankfully I put the brakes on it but I did gain back a significant amount of weight that I had lost and I'm in the process of losing it again and also ultimately reaching my goal but I want to stop that cycle of emotional eating 
that is driving me where I don't want to go. So with that said, I had purchased this book a long time ago, never finished it. And honestly, you know, it was just, it was just, uh, asking a bit too much of me, I think, of facing the realities of being unhealthy, being overweight, what that means, and I wasn't ready to do that, and now I am. So, now let's get into the first three days. So, day one was basically getting a snapshot of where I am, where you uh, take your weight, how long you've been at this weight, um, what you've done in the past to try to lose weight, what was successful, what wasn't successful, and then also writing down why do I feel like I ultimately did not succeed in reaching my goal. Because really, basically, any weight loss plan will work if you do it, right? I mean, it's not rocket science. It's eat less than you actually need and then your body will burn the fat on your body for what it needs for energy, and that's how you use the fat up, and then you get to a normal weight, right? Like, this is not rocket science, so it's obviously something else <laughs> that is hindering this process, and that's what I want to get to the bottom of, because I've got the other two parts. I know what to eat, I got the exercise down, now I need to, stop driving myself to the wrong place. <laughs> and now uh, that's what I'm doing. So that was day one, just really getting a feel, facing the music, where you are, why you're here. And then on day two, it was really good because it was just an opportunity to dream without limitations and to think about and envision how I want to be. Not just what's good enough, not just what I'll accept, not just what's okay, but my best self, like to be in the best shape of my life, to be physically just fit and strong and lean and toned and just how I want to be and get that vision in my hand. And then when do I want to be there? Like, do I want this to take five years, two years, a year, a month, what? And then realistically look at, well, if I need to lose this much weight, is this really, you know, enough time to get there? That's what I did. And I'm giving myself, you know, a year. I have a doctor's appointment in August of 2023. And I want to go to that doctor's appointment in August of 2023, a new woman. I want to go there and be fit, and lean and healthy and strong and I want to just wow my doctor. Now, I've already um, wowed her <laughs> because she took me off of the quarterly follow-ups that I was on um, due to some significant health problems, which should have been enough to really motivate me. Well, it did motivate me. That's, where I, that's how I even got started with this whole process two years ago because I knew I needed to make some changes or I was driving myself to the definitely wrong destination. And so um, they, she was pleasantly surprised at the weight loss I've achieved so far and even uh, took me off the quarterly follow-ups to a yearly follow-up. But I know the progress I've made is just a drop in the bucket to where I need to, what I need to do and what I want to do. So, my goal is to show up next next August and be minimum 100 pounds lighter, okay? So, I am doing that. So, day three is where you really begin to get kind of peeling back the layers. Now that you've identified where you are and you've identified where you wanna go, now we're gonna start dealing with why are you here, okay? And ultimately, it's through what the book identifies as self-sabotaging beliefs, SSBs, okay? And where those come from, because God created us in His image, He created, created us in His likeness, 
and for us to win. I mean, there are scriptures, so many scriptures in the Bible that talks about how God wants to do good for us. He wants us to have good things. He wants to bless us, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Like it's good, okay? And we are meant to do good things and to, you know, if, if we love our neighbors, we love ourselves, that means we love ourselves, right? I can't love you like I love me if I don't love me. I mean, I'm not gonna love you really very much, right? If I don't love me. So we're meant to love ourselves. We're meant to, to think that we can do anything, right? That we are capable, we're smart, we're important, we matter. But there's things that happen in life that comes along that starts making you think, you're not worthy, you're not important, you don't matter. And it's evidenced through abusing yourself through food. I mean, it's no, an addiction to food that leads to morbid obesity is no different than an addiction to alcohol, drugs, gambling, you name it, okay? These are just other types of addictions that destroy people's lives and obesity destroys people's lives. It steals your health, it steals time with your family, it steals your dreams, it steals a lot of time and life and energy and potential from your life, right? Whether you're physically unable to do things or you don't feel comfortable being out and doing things, so it's mentally, <laughs> you, you don't, you know, it doesn't matter how it steals from you. If it limits you in any way, it's stealing from you. Our thoughts drive our emotions, and if we are emotional eaters, which the majority of people who are overweight are emotional eaters, I would say a lot of people are emotional eaters, whether they're overweight or not, right? The first thing you want is if something goes wrong, you wanna eat something comforting, um, or if something goes right, you wanna eat something to celebrate. And so sometimes, and that's not always a bad thing, but when it's out of place and food doesn't have its proper place in your life, it can get out of hand. And the evidence is on our bodies, right? So that was one of the biggest things of the first three days is to understand that how I have thought is not how I was meant to be thinking. And, the, and that came from somewhere. Not for me, okay? And this is not like a blame game to put blame on family members or whatever because sometimes people say things and they don't even mean anything, okay? But I know looking back on my life, I have always felt like I was larger than anyone else. Even though when I look back and I see pictures of me as a child, I wasn't overweight. Or pictures of me in high school, I looked fine but I always felt like I wasn't. So those thoughts are self-sabotaging thoughts. And if you think you are a certain way, you will eventually drive yourself till that becomes reality, right? It works both ways. If, if you have a vision for your life and it's for something good, it compels you to do something, right? For example, if you have a vision of becoming like people who want to become teachers or become doctors or whatever, it compels them to go to school to do that until they ultimately become that thing that's in their mind, right? Well, if you've always felt like you were overweight, something was wrong, you had a problem, you couldn't fix it, no matter how much you tried to exercise, you tried to diet, you tried to do something, if you believe in your mind this is who I am, you're gonna drive yourself. That's the path you're gonna take. And I keep saying drive because I, I kinda of see it as like having a map, right? If I have a map of the United States and I want to go to California, but I keep taking the, the highways to Florida, no matter how, what kind, I can get the best car with the best tires, with the best mileage, I can have all the money in the world for gas, and hotels along the way, I can super prepare, I can overpack, and I can get on the road and drive. But if the, I take the road that goes to Florida, I can't drive that road well enough to get to California. And so that's what I'm saying this, this part is. This is getting my thoughts together to identify the thoughts 
that are sabotaging myself and my efforts of getting to a healthy weight. Because I've packed the car. I know what foods to eat. You know, I've, I've got the gas. I know what exercise to do. But I've been still getting on the wrong road. And so that's why here I am two years later and I haven't reached my goal. Now a lot has happened. I haven't been steady and consistent on this journey. But the reason why I haven't been consistent and steady is because I allowed my emotions to drive me to the wrong place. And now I want that to stop. And I don't want to have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. Starting, stopping, starting, stopping. That's been going on for decades. And this is my opportunity to stop it. And over the last several days, in addition to uh, doing this workbook, I've also been watching videos and all kinds of stuff, just all over YouTube. Of course, YouTube is full of all the best information, right? So in my search on YouTube, I found similar teachings that all, all of them deal with just basically changing your mindset and how our mindset has a lot to do with what we ultimately do or don't do. Because if we think we can, we will. If we think we can't, we won't. No matter what, period. And a lot of times those thoughts, we don't realize they're, they're subconscious. We don't realize that they're there. And I'm reading this, so that's why I'm looking off to the side. It says, all the well-intentioned, conscious desire in the world won't help you succeed as long as you have unconscious beliefs and attitudes that are sabotaging you at every turn. So that's where the program to fail comes in because it's like if you have all these beliefs that are fighting against you, it's like you take two steps forward, three steps back every time because it's, it's always a constant battle pressing against, it's like you're going against the grain. You're always going against the resistance, going into a headwind, trying to make take ground, wet rather than you're smooth sailing with the wind at your back pushing you. Because when our thoughts line up with what we want and what we say, then we will just easily sail into it. And we see people who do that, who don't struggle. The people who don't struggle with self-sabotaging beliefs, we see it in their lives. And we in our minds think, oh, they're so lucky. Things just work out for them. They just said they're gonna do something, put their mind to it and they do it. It's because they don't have any beliefs that they can't do it. Now, they may not think they could do something else. They may be failing somewhere else because I don't have self-sabotaging beliefs in every area of my life. I never had it when it came to education, my brain, my marriage with my children, those things I've never, you know, if I've had, have had thoughts come to me, I easily cast them aside because I'm like, no, that's not true. I'm going to do this. And I see the results of that. I see the benefits of that. I see the fruits of that. I have a great marriage. I have a great relationship with my children. We all love each other because there's nothing stopping that desire and my actions to feed that and make that happen. But when it comes to weight, there is. And I can remember, and, and like I said, when I think back to being small, I never, I don't have any memories of not being concerned about food. I don't have any memories of not being larger than my brother and sister. I don't have any memories of not being larger than my cousins. And it was mentioned, like it was, things were said about it. People weren't mean to me, but it was just mentioned. And I internalized that. But when I look back at pictures, it wasn't that much difference. It's not like I was hugely larger than other children. I was, I was a normal sized child. I was just bigger. And I'm also tall, like I'm 5'10 now. I was always the tallest kid in class or one of the tallest kids. I was taller than all the girls, most of the boys. So that played a factor too, but it's not like I was, um, I wasn't even overweight, but I always felt like I was. And what's happened is I've gotten on the road and driven myself right to how I saw myself. The vision that I saw in my head I drove myself there and it became a reality. 
And so now I'm working on the process of changing that vision of myself into fit, strong, healthy, no weight issues, normal weight, no food issues, normal food consumption, and happy about it. It's not like a loss. It's not like, oh, I just miss that so much. No, I don't want it. That's where I'm going. So I am just so excited. I'm, I'm truly, truly, truly excited. And these first three days have just been eye-opening and I am just ready to get into tomorrow's lesson. I'm trying to discipline myself to do it one day at a time because I want to just speed ahead, but it's cautioned against that to take each day as it comes, spend the, you know, about half hour doing it and then kind of let it marinate all day and then do the next lesson. So I'm going to do my best to follow the program as it is and do it one day at a time, just like I do my walks one day at a time and do the salads one day at a time. I'm gonna do this workbook one day at a time. All right, so before I go, I also wanna share the top four success factors because this was also listed in the third day's lesson and they were just so good. Uh, and I think they're important to think about as we go through this process of renewing our mind, getting a new image so we can drive ourselves to the right place, right? Um, the first one is your personal beliefs. And it says it's about what you can and can't do in this life. Because no matter what anyone says, if you don't think you can do it, you're not. But if you think you can, you will, right? Uh, the second one is your self-image or self-concept. This is your own inner vision or concept of your physical body. That's your self-image. Number three is the level of your self-esteem, which is whether you really think that you deserve to win at weight loss. Now that's gonna be a big one. It, there's, there's days that are dedicated to each one of these success factors. So I think that deserve thing is gonna be major because I think a, lo a lot of times, maybe we think we don't deserve it. Maybe we think somebody else deserves this, but not us. Somebody else deserves to win, but not us. It may not be weight loss, it could be something else. It could be that promotion. It could be the to drive the kind of car or have the kind of home or travel the world like you may see someone else do. You may say, oh, well, they deserve it, but I don't. Like we have a reason why we don't. I think that's gonna be a great lesson. I'm excited about that. I'm not gonna skip forward, um, but I'm looking forward to that. And then the fourth one is your sense of self-empowerment. And that is, whether you see yourself as being in control of your life or a victim of life's circumstances. And that's gonna be a good one too. So the top four success factors are your personal beliefs, your self-image, the level of your self-esteem, and your sense of self-empowerment. And all of those things are gonna be dealt with in this, in this uh, lesson, so I'm really excited about that. Oh. This is something that I want to really say when it's talking about how we were created to win and programmed to fail. This was an important passage and I wanted to share it with you guys because it really speaks to how other people can sow things into our lives, into our minds, and we are reaping the harvest of that, right? And we're having to deal with it. And we're seeing that manifestation with it however it comes out in their life, okay? Whether it's through food addiction, any other kind of addiction or problems or whatever. And we also get the benefits when people sow good things into our lives, right? When we have parents and, and family and teachers and what, everybody has that kind of story, right? I had a teacher who believed in me when nobody else did and they told me this, that, and the other, and then they have great results. Well, that was a seed that was sown into their life. Well, the same thing can happen with a uh, with bad seeds. So anyway, it says, it is not your fault that other people have planted weed seeds in your mental garden. And it's not your fault if these weed seeds have made your life a less beautiful or less enjoyable place to be. But as soon as you understand the reality of how your life has got to be as it is, you will understand that it absolutely is your responsibility to weed that garden. Nobody else can do it for you. And if you don't do it, it will not get done. 
That was really, really powerful to me. So that's, it helps us to understand, like, we don't need to feel bad. We don't need to feel condemned. We don't need to feel guilty or responsible that these seeds were sown into our lives and that we have these kind of thoughts that have caused these kind of problems. But it is our responsibility to weed our own garden. It is our responsibility to take control of our thoughts and our mind and basically get our lives together because no one else is going to do it for us. It's not our fault, but it's our responsibility to fix it. And thank God we have tools to do that, right? So it also says, to complete the metaphor, we simply need to note that trying to succeed at weight loss by changing from one diet to the next is like rearranging the decks and the chairs on the Titanic. It's not going to make any difference to the outcome. Okay? So what we're doing is, what I'm doing is, I'm no longer rearranging chairs on the Titanic. I'm actually getting off the Titanic into one of the lifeboats and sailing off to rescue <laughs> so I can live my life. Uh, so enough of the metaphors, but I just thought that was really good just to understand, look, it's nothing to feel guilty about, but we it is our responsibility and, uh, and that we can do something about it. So keep walking, keep eating healthy, keep changing your mind, thinking better thoughts, Thinking better of yourself, loving yourself, being kind to yourself, and telling yourself that you can do it because we can do it, okay? And we're gonna get rid of these self sabotaging beliefs, replace them with good, the right beliefs that we can do this thing, and then we're gonna see success. So I will do a another follow up on day seven and then from then on it'll just be on the end of the week I think just kind of a recap of what the best lessons were and then hopefully if you guys are following along we can talk about it together about what we've learned that week okay and also if we've been walking if we've been staying on track with our food yada 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 I'd love to do that with you guys so anyway talk to you later bye bye